Indeed. We were just talking a little bit about our uh, alcohol use in the past, and I was thinking about uh, the use of drugs today, or oh, the use of drugs uh, overall, uh, how it uh, it's sort of almost like mimics formlessness, right? and uh, because you get that sense of freedom of of something other than your normal state that seems uh, like a boring form and then mm, uh, temporary relief though yeah it's not, you know it's not uh like manara yeah. says painkiller literally like <laughs> painkillers but yeah it's painkiller it's temporary relief it's not lasting and it'll probably wind up being more frustrating in the long run yeah because he becomes it, it depends on, it's dependent for that feeling on something so exactly. it it's not real. It's or in, That's in the why same Maharaj sense. says, throw away the walker. You can stand on your own two feet. Yeah. You don't need any outside support because if you try to imagine that there's an outside support supporting you, then what's the point? Because <laughs> yeah. if that outside support is no longer there, oh no, now I'm not realized. I was realized, now I'm not realized. Oh no, this is terrible. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say that with the same thing uh, with comparison, comparing my personal states, whereas sometimes I feel blissful and sometimes I don't, that becomes like an, it, it, once you objectify it as having been in the past, it becomes like an outside support. Well, knowing the knower of, hey, I'm in bliss and the knower of I am not in bliss is formless. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not identified with the body, this formless knowingness is knowing I am blissful or I am not so blissful. I'm not at peace. But That's why Maharaj both. says, who knows this? Like, except mm -hmm. your selfless self, there's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no Master. The entire world is projected on your spontaneous presence, including bliss, mm -hmm. feelings of not bliss, feelings, oh, I've got it, oh, I've lost it the yo-yo of coming up and down. This is just games that you're playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Both both states, can or any states, can only be present states. So they're really well, not... There's no states. Yeah, well, states are appearing on your presence. So who cares what they're happening or not happening? Mm -hmm. Because you pay attention to you. Your presence, all this world is projected. And so getting involved in states or, you know, like even people who get into the samadhi, oh, what are the different types of samadhi, the nervakapa samadhi or the, the this samadhi, the natural samadhi, the samadhi with breath. No, forget about all that because mm -hmm. samadhi is just a pointer that you are. All mm -hmm. these are appearing on your spontaneous presence, all these various, quote, samadhi states. And that's why Maharaj says, a samadhi is not ultimate truth. Because mm -hmm. you're experiencing this samadhi. Oh, I had a very good samadhi. I had a very bad samadhi. Oh, I was able to remain in the, in the nerva couple of samadhi state for the entire week. And then suddenly there was a touch of body and I realized, oh, I'm back in the world. No, none of this is true. It's all imagination. You're playing <laughs> with yourself. Mm -hmm. The belief that it's true causes the disturbance and creates a doubt. If you just remain with yourself, there's no doubt. In the you same, yeah. in the at, same sense. Yeah. Every time you want to sit there and try to get philosophical, say stop that and mm. remain with your selfless self. Okay, I have this urge to sit here and try to contemplate the universe and figure this out and that out. No, I'm just going to remain with myself. I'm going to sit quietly 
that just died, just died, because that's going to erase all of this illusion. Mm -hmm. Simply, oh, I'm going to sit there, I'm going I'm to write an email to Maharaj about how I'm feeling and the ups and downs and all that so he can give me some insight. Ah, before I write my email, let me remain with my selfless self. Guess what? No email will be written. Mm. Mm. <laughs> because no questions can arise. In, in everything, if we spend the time with our own selfless self, there will be no questions. And any questions that you may have will arise and be solved spontaneously. The answer will come along with the question. It'll just be, oh, so that I, I am that. Ah, but I have a question about after death. I remain with my selfless self instead of vocalizing the question, giving it to mind. Because you understand your mind, if you flow along with the flow of thoughts and you ask questions, there will never be satisfaction because you'll say, oh, explain this. Okay, explain this. Oh, that's why Das Boat is beautiful. It says the listeners asked this, the listeners had this doubt, the listeners had this, this, this. And Das Boat just says, okay, this is the reality. Now the doubt is removed. Pay attention to the next chapter because the listeners had some additional doubts and we're going to remove those. Because you remain with your selfless self. There's really no need for satsang, no need to read spiritual books. There comes a time and a point where you can just sit there quietly. That sense of presence has appeared to you, whether presence is there or not, you are. No words, no world, nothing, nothing. Nothing. No need to send emails. No need to ask questions. No need to read books. The only reason we send emails, ask questions, read books, go to satsang is because we're not really willing to spend time with our own self. Just th That's why Maharaj says it's very simple spirituality. If you spend the time with yourself, you actually, you, I must know myself. I sit there quietly. And now it's finished. You go about, do your job, do your duties, take care of all your responsibilities. But you are not there. There's no local identification. No universal identification. Nothing. <laughs> Therefore, you become unshakable because you're not there. Well, I mean... Of course, the body is still available to you, but you're just not identified with it, so you're not so interested in the day-to-day -day activities of the body. And yet you do your job, do your duties. You can still, body relations, okay, that's fine, but you know. That's why in Nizagadatta Maharaj talks about the neighbor's child. Okay, this body is like the neighbor's child. If it gets sick or whatever, I take care of it, but it's not so important. <clears throat> Life goes on. Well, and, and you say, oh, you know, I have a, a friend who's dying in the hospital. You remain with your selfless self. This is as close to your friend as you can get. Because mm -hmm. the same presence is animating that body form. So you remaining with your selfless self, just I, just I, that's as close as you, you don't have to drive to the hospital or, or go any place to visit because you're there. <laughs> There's no local identification. There's no need to move the body around back and forth. Now, of course, customary, you know, your friend might be like, hey, <laughs> like you didn't bother mm -hmm. to visit the hospital. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying it's not so like, oh, my God, so difficult. One of the main reasons when our friends get sick or whatever and we see them, you know, dying or uh, it is because of our own mortality, because we don't know ourselves. We see this body form deteriorating and we then care and worry about this body form deteriorating because what happens to me? But mm -hmm. you accept your selfless self. No God, no Brahman, no Paramatma, no Master. Nothing is there. 
And uh, somebody wrote in, are, are we the knower of awareness? Well, awareness is just a word that came along with the body. And you could say the awareness is the knowingness, something you are aware of something. But you are, before presence, before the illusory world, before the concept of duality, you're the formless holder of the body. We talked about if the space was just seen through these eyes and the confusion arose, look at all these things and I forget I'm this space. And then somebody comes along and tells me, I have understood that I am just space. I'm not this body form. That I'm the space seeing through these eyes. For a time I identified with a body and said, this is John and John is seeing these things. But now the understanding has come I'm the space I'm using these eyes to see inside myself. And whether this body is here or not, the space is. Just various points, various uh, telescopes, basically, seeing inside. But they're empty. There's, there's nothing in. There's nothing like, yeah. When this telescope can no longer see inside the illusion, okay, there's many others. And you say, oh, but John's experience is over. The, the interesting thing is the people that are sitting there going to your funeral, looking at you and saying, oh, there's John, that's the same presence. So technically speaking, the, the, the experience is not ending. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you are that. The entire world appears upon your spontaneous presence. And this is why, again, we can go deep, quickly into dream. Because you can say, oh, yeah, now the understanding is there. Dream world appears, little dream character. I identify with the dream character. Therefore, I'm able to, to move around and to have a story and to, to see things, even though nothing is true. For a time, it impresses, oh, look, all this stuff is happening. Then you wake up and you realize, oh, it was just a dream. When you know yourself in a real sense, this so-called waking dream will no longer impress. It loses its bite. Because you're formless. There's nothing to bite. Mm -hmm. No place to hang the hat. No hook, no local identification. You must discover this. And that's why Maharaj says part-time spirituality is not going to work. You got to know, want to know yourself in a real sense. Every waking moment devoted to yourself. As Siddhar Meshra Maharaj told Nizagadatta Maharaj, and Nizagadatta Maharaj wrote, hey, every waking moment, when I was not doing something specific, I remained with the I am, because I must know. And within three years, he realized himself. Because every waking moment you spend, oh, you know, there's so many good opportunities in this illusory world to remain with yourself. All the lines that you might be waiting in, the traffic you might be waiting in, anytime you're riding in the elevator, riding on an escalator, shopping, anytime, all these times are good times to remain with your selfless self. Mantra, after some time, you'll hear it running in the body. Hmm. Thousands of times a day, it's just breathing in and breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. You're hearing the mantra. Just as this body is now like a musical instrument, 
empty, but the wind is making the note, making the the mantra run. And you're aware of this. And once you catch yourself, you no longer flow along with the illusory thoughts. You just won't. Because why would you? Like, it, it doesn't... Uh, you're going to understand that these thoughts are coming and going and I have nothing to do with those. They are nothing about me. Because mind came along with the body and every thought, every idea, every image is projected from the body-based perspective. You're not body. So being prior to mind, what can the mind offer you in the form of thoughts that might have previously held attention that now are like black and white TV in a color world? It, it, it won't it won't interest you. It does make me laugh when you when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's true. <laughs> And that doesn't mean you just sit like a stone log. <laughs> you, know? you still have a job. You still have responsibilities. Do things and take care of your whatever your daily activities are. You do your job. Do your duties. But you know yourself in a real sense. And the truth is the scenes will just appear and disappear. You're not going to keep track of time. There won't be a, a timeline because you're not pretending to be something. And you're not struggling to hold on to the illusory something because of fear of what am I or who am I? These all pass. Scenes appear and disappear, appear and disappear, appear and disappear in the moment, and then scene is gone. New scene, next. Still have entertainment, watch TV, go to the movies, go outside, go to a park, whatever. It doesn't matter because you know yourself in a real sense. You never cannot be yourself. And there's no longer the doubt. Oh, no. Because I went outside, I lost myself inside my <laughs> house. I was very quiet and I knew myself. Now I go outside my house. Oh, I lost myself. <laughs> Even saying this doesn't, yeah, it makes us laugh. I lost myself. Okay. Mm. I lose myself because I mistake satisfaction coming from uh, experience, sense, sense experience. Well, and there's no experience, no experiencer. Where all experience ends, there you are. Whether experience is there or not, you are. You're not experiencing. Hmm. And again, sit quietly with your own self. Should only take like a second to sort of, okay, the layer of presence, this just I, this I am, and then, oh, hmm. Mm. Now, what were we talking about? <laughs> because it's, it, it, it's a black hole. It sucks in all the concepts. There's no surface chatter. It's just... Oh, so that I, I am that. And I am that, whether it gets very busy. I could be in a nightclub, dancing, music blaring, people enjoying, and I am that. 
<laughs> what else or where else doesn't matter yeah because there's no local identification <clears throat> and even the concept universal consciousness doesn't exactly make sense because what's universal what's limited what's how Mm. Again, you are the answer to all your questions. <laughs> it's interesting because I read, I'm, I'm, I'm reading some of Ramana Mahashi and my morning readings and stuff. And it's interesting how, like somebody asks a question and he'll say like the same thing. Like there's nothing, you know, you, you are that uh, yourself and, and all this sort of thing. But the person will misinterpret it and then want to ask a question on top of what Ramana Maharshi just said, but mm. based on their initial question, almost as if they didn't listen to a, a <laughs> thing that he said. <laughs> is, again, this is if you remain with yourself, you don't have to exercise this mind flow of thoughts. Oh, mm. I have a question. And while the question is being described, which is basically... You are that. Your mind is coming with another question. There's no satisfaction because there's constant flow of thoughts and constant doubts coming. That's why removing the doubter. How do you remove the doubter? You remain with your selfless self. The concept of a doubter doesn't arise in your spontaneous presence because you're prior to presence. Whether presence is there or not, you are. But I found that very interesting. I'm sitting here reading it, and he'll say something that you can feel like, okay, this is truth. And then this guy asks another mm -hmm. question as mm -hmm. if he didn't even talk. Like oh. he's only listening to the answers in his own mind. It's because we have this blind spot that assumptions of knowing something existing like the self uh prevents us from with a body form as a mm. separate individual receiving answers mm. and asking questions it's a blind spot based on assumption listener and speaker are one and the same mm. the questioner the answer is in the questioner and that's why it's best to keep quiet and remain with your selfless self. Be normal, be simple, be humble, be always with you. Question comes up. Oh. I want to write an email asking question. Oh. Even after some time. Oh, I feel like listening to a sad song. No, let's let's remain with my selfless self. Yeah, because I'll just I'll just end up thinking I know something about assumptions, what I just said. Then I think I know something else on top of what I. Based just, on your ideas, beliefs, and concepts that you're holding about yourself is how you'll view the world. You're perceiving the world instead of perceiving it cleanly, knowing yourself in a real sense. You perceive it through the lens of me, of I, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. this is me. That's why a lot of times you'll see people and they'll be like, no, 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 I'm Christian. I won't have anything to do with this. Okay, this is good. But understand that Christian is a concept that came along with the body. Prior to the body, were you Christian? No. Were you Muslim? No. Were you Hindu? No. All of these concepts came along with the body. So to hold on to a concept and say, this I must hold on to, that's why also if you've been in spirituality for some time, and you start acquiring all of these concepts, and you can speak the language of Brahman, Atman, and Moksha, and, and mm -hmm. Kosha, and all these things. You're very happy speaking all this stuff. You're not going to want to let go of that. And every question will be perceived through this very narrow lens. Hmm. It could seem like a wider lens, but it's still the narrow lens, nevertheless. Of course, as long as there's identification of yourself as something you will have some preference. And I don't mean preference like chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream. Enjoy. Who cares? I mean preference as this is how I hear 
see, perceive, and experience the world around me, quote, unquote. But when you know yourself in a real sense, again, scenes appearing and disappearing. That's you're not clinging and you're not pushing away. It's an interesting thing about uh, when I think about, I used to be in a, uh, Tibetan Buddhist meditation class for a long time and uh, the, the guy that uh, was the leader of the classes, he was like a, a good student of the the, the, uh, the master at the time and uh, he he was so, seemed so knowledgeable, he knew all the his memory was much better than mine I, I would never be capable of remembering all the things that he seemed to know and, I, and so I would you know, compare myself with, you know, uh, do I have to know all these details about Buddhism in order to uh, uh, to know what he knows and be like him? And, uh, but it, it was just... Uh, no knowledge is knowledge. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was much, so smart, you know. He, you know, I'm sure he was, you know, probably closer to the truth than I was, but uh, it didn't. It doesn't have to but do... How, how can you say this? See, again, yeah. this is the concept. He's closer yeah, to the yeah. truth than I am. Oh, yeah. You're both formless presence. Back to and, and he's closer to the truth than you are. This is the concept. A dualistic mm -hmm. just imagining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same as the deer who sees the water and goes to quench the thirst, dips its nose in, Oh, it's only sand. <laughs> now it's direct realization. It's only sand. But as it's walking towards the water, it could be imagining all sorts of, oh, thirst is going to be quenched. Um, this is quenching my thirst. There's water there. And then direct recognition, realization. It's self-evident. Oh, it's sand. There is no water here. All these illusory concepts is very easy to get lost, but the primary thing mm -hmm. that all these illusory concepts stick to mm -hmm. is the concept, I am somebody else. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the concept, I am somebody else, <laughs> what <should> you... <laughs> who's going to be a good Buddhist or a good Christian or a good Muslim or a good Hindu? Uh, again, do your job, do your duties. If this body was... Going through these motions, okay, that's fine. But you you know it's not related to you. Mm -hmm. You're prior to body knowledge. All body knowledge. Your fire is burning bright, and you're piling extra concepts on. No concepts, direct recognition. Oh, so that I, I am that. Even the concept, you know, a lot of spiritual, uh, even when, when I was doing uh, Facebook, I, I called it Guru Putra because I had read Master of Self-Realization and Guru Putra <laughs> was son of the guru. And I really <laughs> liked that. I said, ah, I am Guru Putra. <laughs> and for like a year, I went on Facebook as Guru Putra. <laughs> but again, this is just another layer of illusion. Yes. Why to name myself? That's why Maharaj says, this is just spiritual chit-chat. It's not, I'm a great spiritual master. He said that in the Ramakant Maharaj USA things. He's like, come on, just uh, this is just chit-chat. He doesn't have any concept of himself being a great spiritual master and disciples mm -hmm. are coming to him or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. Anything that you try to build, you mm -hmm. need the building blocks of I am somebody else. And along with that comes a lot of problems. Okay, you can be Guru Putra, and people say, oh, Guru Putra, you are so wise, and that's Ooh. lovely. But along with that building block then comes, what happens if I don't have followers, or what happens if I make a mistake, or, or something like this. When you're spontaneously speaking because there's no speaker, there's no nothing, it's just a flow, mm -hmm. then there's nothing up in your beingness somewhere that says, what am I saying? Or is this correct? Or does that 
how does this match up with the the books? And yet, in the speaking, that's one of the things that you know when you know yourself in the real sense. Oh, so all these different various spiritual texts are just reinforcing the fact that you are that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like direct verification, direct recognition in the projection. And this book, oh yes, I understand. This is, yes, oh. I'm no longer identified with a body. And it's not I am no longer identified with a body. There's no I there to be identified or not identified. I is now everything. Because... I am more like the space or the sky than these objects within it. And even that is a mind trick. Again, it's got to, you just, meditation. Okay, this just I, this sense of presence. So much peace, so much bliss. Okay, good, good. And now we just remain with ourselves. Whether this presence is there or not, I am. Body came along with the presence. Presence. Whether there's presence or no presence, I am. I never cannot be. Knock, knock on the door. Who's there? Nobody's there. But somebody had to be there to say nobody's there. The sense of existence arose, but you had to exist prior to the sense of existence, because otherwise, to whom would this sense of existence appear? Mm. And when you remain with yourself, I mean, you eliminate body, mind, world, I mean, everything just... <laughs> And then go ahead, do your job, do your duties. As long as this body form is available, do what is needing to be done, knowing that there's no deed, no doer. Oh, hi, Andrew. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing with this the whole time. Listening to uh. you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> My vision is so poor now, I can barely, mm -hmm. I, it's hard to even see anything on the computer anyway. Uh, so, okay, okay. yeah. <clears throat> Just the other side of I am, right? Uh, the, yeah. The other side. The doorway. I the am. Doorway, I yeah. exist. A sense of existence. On one side is the world, and the other side is your own self. And there is no side, but just for right. example. Yeah. <laughs> Dark matter. Yeah, I mean, we have to use words until we're no longer using these body forms. Mm. And again, remember, space in the room animating this body. If there were 10 other bodies in the room, that same space is animating all those bodies. So if this body could no longer sustain the essence and fell, it does not affect the space. The body is still inside the space. These bodies are still moving about. 
and and are seeing this body oh this body just dropped oh no <laughs> you know but it's mm -hmm. it's all again back to dream this is the easiest way 